John chapter 4, verses 34 through 38. John chapter 4, verses 34 through 38. This section of verses takes place immediately after Jesus witnesses to the woman at the well. Christ had need to go from Judea to Galilee. And by traditional custom, his path to, from Judea to Galilee would have taken him around the city of Samaria. But Christ said, I must need go through Samaria. Now this violated a lot of cultural uh, rules, regulations, or whatever. That, that were supposed to be followed as a Jew. You did not. You didn't go through. You didn't associate with the Samaritans. They were. They were. They were below. They were. They were uh, separate and apart from. They. They didn't deserve the Jews' attention. They are. Uh, uh, they have no interaction at all. But Jesus goes and decides to go through there. And not only does he go through there, he interacts with a Samaritan person, a Samaritan woman. As a matter of fact, not just a Samaritan woman, but this woman was a social outcast because of her past, her present, her activities. She was unmarried. She had had several husbands, and the man that she was living with was not her husband. And Jesus was able to tell her that. And the way Jesus ministered to her touched her in such a way that she knew, once he revealed himself, knew him to be who he is, the Son of God, the living water. And so, upon getting there at the well, Jesus stayed and the disciples went into town to get something to eat, to get food, to bring back for Jesus to eat. So then they come back. Verse 27 says, at this point the disciples came and they marveled that he talked with a woman. Yet no one said, what do you seek or why are you talking to her? Verse 28 says, the woman left her water pot and went her way into the city and said to the men, come and see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? So, Christ ministered to her in actually a situation where he should never have even been speaking to her. Ministers to her, she hears the good news of the gospel and she goes and takes it to the men of the town. And they came out of the city came to him. In the meantime, his disciples urged him, saying, Rabbi, eat. And Jesus, says, Jesus said, I have food to eat, of which you do not know. Therefore, the disciples said to one another, has anyone brought him anything to eat? And this is where we go into the set of verses that, uh, that we're going to go through today. Verse 34. Jesus said unto them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. My food <laughs> is to do the will of him that sent me. Now we know what food is. What, what it means to, you need food to survive. You need food to survive. You get your nourishment, your nutrients, Everything you need, all the four food groups, the carbs, the, you, you, all your, your proteins, all that stuff, you get from food. Some people, you know, try to get through supplements today, but Jesus didn't have supplements back then. He didn't have that back then. Everything you got came through your 
food, your sustenance, your 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 existence depended upon having food. But Jesus is saying, my food is to do the will of him who sent me. When we're hungry, we have a hunger that drives us. Because <laughs> when we get hungry, hunger influences our decisions. Hunger can influence our decisions. Okay, hunger influences our mood. Hunger influences us in a lot of different ways. You know, people get cranky when they get hungry. <laughs> people get impatient when they get hungry. Uh, some people get weak. Some people get start feeling sick when they get hungry. But that hunger, that inside your body desires food, desires food. And when you eat, that hunger is satisfied. That hunger is now satisfied. Jesus came to do the will of him who sent Jesus. God sent Jesus into the world with a purpose to establish the church, to, 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 uh, to wash away sins, to provide a means that we can have a relationship, a restored relationship back with God. get people to believe in him, to receive him as Lord and Savior, so that they can have a relationship with God. To restore humanity back to God. That was Jesus' whole purpose in coming. And he said his food is to do the will. His food, what that his purpose, his desire was so strong that it was it was it was as food to Jesus to do the will of God. It satisfied his hunger. It satisfied his desire to do what God had for him to do. It was as food to do the will of him to, to, who sent him to finish his work. Remember when Jesus was on the cross. Before he gave up the ghost, he said, it is finished. The restoration work, the work of restoring man, giving man opportunity to have a relationship with God at the point where Jesus gives up the ghost, it is finished. He finished the work that God had for him to do. To restore mankind, give mankind the opportunity to have a relationship back with him. My food it satisfies me. It fills me. Quenches my desire to do his work and to finish his work. Everything that God had done from the point of the Garden of Eden all the way up to sending Jesus, everything that he had done was to establish himself before the people to bring about it was all part of God's plan of salvation, of restoration to bring mankind back to himself. Everything that God did from the point of Adam sitting in the garden to the point where Jesus died, everything God did was for the purpose of restoring man back to himself. Jesus said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. He goes on to say, do we not say that there are four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. In the New International Version, verse 35 says, do you not say four months more and then the harvest, I tell you, open your eyes and look at the field. They are ripe for harvest. The fields are ripe for harvest. Now, on a farm, you have to wait until you, you, you can't plant seeds on Monday, go out Tuesday, and, and harvest whatever it is you planted seeds for. You can't. It's just not possible. It's not going to happen. 
we're going to let it regrow corn, lots of corn. The beginning of summer, late spring, the farmers will be out there planting corn. March, April, May, April, May time frame. They're out there planting corn. They've already got the dirt turned. They're out there planting that corn in March. In April, you're not harvesting corn yet. In May, you're not harvesting corn yet. June, you're not harvesting corn yet. July, August. August would be the month to harvest that corn. Actually, July, June, July time frame, yeah. That's your that's your uh, your harvest time. Corn grows up, and you see the big yellow tassels that you see on the corn and all of that. That's how you know it's time to harvest the corn. The corn is ready when the tassels are. When the tassels are present, then you know it's time to harvest. When the seed is sown, you have to wait. But then, in the time from that seed is sown, the farmer he, he fertilizes. During the time of nature, God's going to rain. It's going to rain to water the fields. Sunlight has to hit the field. All these different things have to happen in order for those seeds, in order for those seeds to take root, in order for those seeds to draw nutrients from the dirt that, that, they, that they draw, to begin to grow, to shoot up from the ground, to get up to knee high by a certain point, and then to get uh, grown to full maturity. That seed takes time. That's a natural seed. That natural seed takes time to sow. But he says, Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already ripe for harvest. And in NIV says, Why they, your fields are ripe for harvest. Ripe. Fruit. We talk about fruit being ripe for harvest. Buy green bananas in the in the in the in, at the grocery store and bring them home. They're not yet quite not quite yet ripe. They turn yellow. They're ripe. They've already been harvested. They're already mature enough to harvest. They're already mature enough to cut off the tree and bring it to the store, and the store can sell it. But he says, lift up your eyes and look at the fields. They are already ripe for harvest. The fields that he's talking about are the fields of people in the earth. They are ripe for harvest. Because everything that God has done, again, from the time of Adam's sin to the time of Jesus, now has been planting seeds. He's been planting those seeds that whole time. Now, when there's a time to when it's time to harvest, when it's time to, to, to restore man back to relationship with God, the field is now right for harvest. Verse 36. And he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life. Both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this saying is for in this the saying is true, one sows and another reaps. What we're called to do today, God says, Go ye therefore into the world and make this into the nations. Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations. Make disciples of all nations. Make followers of all nations. We're required to teach them the things that Christ has imparted unto us. Make disciples, make followers of all nations. But how do we do that? The parable of the sower, the farmer who plants the seeds, who spreads the seeds. The seeds fall on all different types of ground. Some falls on rock. You know that nothing grows on a rock. A seed that falls on a rock will be dried out by the sun or plucked up by the birds. Some may fall on shallow dirt. 
where it goes in and it takes root, but the roots can't go very deep, so the plant doesn't grow up very strong. And that those those little weak plants plucked up by the crows, plucked up by the uh, the birds. Then there's a fertile ground, deep fertile ground, where it falls in, and then the, the it grows and the roots spread, and then the plant shoots up, and then it's it, it's harvested rightfully in its time. We are that sower. We are that sower. It says in that parable that just in going to sow the seed that the farmer was going to sow, that the seed fell on different types of, of soil. Because that farmer had seed going out all the time, going out all over the place. The farmer was sowing seed. We are that farmer. We are that sower. The sower is the one who plants, who puts the seed in the ground. One sows and another reaps. So what we're called to do is sow seed. Sow seed. One sows and one reaps. As we're sowing seed throughout the land, we don't know what type of we don't know what type of ground it's falling on. We're just sowing seed. Wherever we share the gospel, wherever we let our light so shine before men, wherever we share uh, just present the gospel of Jesus Christ, we don't know what type of person or what condition the person is in that we're sharing the gospel with, that we're letting our light so shine in front of. We don't know. That person may have just gone through something and they're at the rock bottom point of their life where they feel like there's no hope, where they feel like they can't go on, where they feel like their problems and their situations are so overwhelming that they just don't know what to do. But here we come along with the, the, gospel, the gospel message of hope. And it doesn't have to be us just sitting down sharing. Hearing their, their entire problem. And then, you know, sharing the, the gospel with them right there on the spot. But it could be just us with a, a smile on our face. Us having a joyful attitude. Being kind. Doing the things that, that, that what, what everything that the, the, the God said love is. Love is patient and is kind. Doing all of those things. We're sowing. We're putting the seeds out there. We're putting the seed. The seed of the word of God. We're putting it out there. To let it do whatever it's going to do. On the ground. Wherever it happens to fall. We don't know where it happens to fall. We don't know what type of ground. We don't choose the ground. We don't choose the kind of people that we think are ready to receive the gospel. We can't look at this person over here and they're just acting so ugly and just talking bad about people and they have a horrible attitude. Oh, I don't want to share the gospel with them. But this person over here that's real, really being nice and they're just the most pleasant person, oh, I think they'd be a good Christian. I think that person would be a good Christian. I think that I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna wait for an opportunity. I'm gonna share the I'm gonna share the gospel with them. We can't do that. We can't do that. We have to let our light so shine before men that they will see our good works and glorify God. That was that was last week's message. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was that was last week. Not choosing who to shine our light on. Remember. Not trying to focus our being on any one person because somebody's going to miss it. Somebody that really needs it is going to miss it. Same thing as we sow the seed of the gospel, as we walk through our lives. When I was stationed at George, I went T.Y. to the Honduras, which was really cool. And there was a group of guys having a conversation. I wasn't in sitting with them. I wasn't a part of the conversation. 
Um, in fact, they were they were sitting out, we stayed in these these pooches, is what they call it. It's just a long wooden building. They don't have windows, but screens, you know, where the windows would be. And it's just there's no air or anything. It's just an open air, big open <coughs> kind of thing. There were bunk beds all the way down for like 24 people. There's 12 bunk beds. My bed was kind of close to the door, and I was on an upper bunk. And the guys were sitting on the stairs outside, and I was just, I was in there, I was just reading my word, just reading the word, not bothering anybody, just reading my word. They were sitting outside, and for whatever reason, their conversation turned to the Bible. So, so I'm listening, I'm reading, but I'm listening to them, and they're saying all these different things. Why? Well. I, I really, I, I find it hard to believe the Bible because there's so many different versions out there and you don't know which one's the truth and blah, and just all these really, you know, lame excuses why, you know, they don't believe the Bible, this, that, and the other. And one of the guys, his wife had just gotten saved, uh, he shared that, and they, 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 they kind of laughed at him and everything. And uh, so that, after the conversation ended, they all went their different ways. And one guy, his wife, had just gotten married, or just gotten saved. He came in, and he saw me reading my Bible, and um, he said, do you hear that conversation out there? I said, yeah. He said, well, what'd you think of that? I said, well, the Bible is true. And, you know, that, yeah, there's a lot of different versions out there, but it's, they, they all say the same thing. As long as it's the Holy Bible, whatever version you read, I was like, it's, it's the same thing as, the book, um, uh, I, I can't remember what title I shared with it, but if it gets translated into all these different languages, it, it you know, the book is still about what it's about. They, they're saying the same thing, they're saying it in a different way, they're saying it in another language, but it's still the same book. And that's, you know, and that was, that was as far as our conversation went. That was in 1988. In 1991, we deployed to Desert Shield, Desert Storm. Same guy, we're, we formed up the chapel services and everything, and we're having it. And the same guy, I met that same guy three years later, and he remembers me. He's like, hey, I remember, I, guess what? I got saved. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. You know, you know, all glory to God. All the way to God. I didn't share the gospel with him. I didn't tell him, well, Jesus is the answer to all your problems. I didn't tell him that in the, in the beginning, man, God created man and man sinned and there was a gap. So God sent Jesus to cover that gap. But if you take it, I didn't tell him all of that. All I told him, all I said was, you know what, the Bible is true. Just read through it for yourself and see the Bible is true. That's all, that's, that's, that, that, that was the gist of all I told him. Now, that was just planting a seed. His wife had just gotten saved. So, whatever she was doing, she was planting seeds. She was watering. She was watering. She was letting the gospel go as well. She was flowing. But it was flowing to her. She was letting her light so shine. She was sowing seed. But the gospel, as, as we presented, and, and if I'm presented to a person who's never heard the gospel before, then it goes in as a seed. And that person goes along now and later on in life, and they hear it again, and they continue to hear that the gospel's going forward, but now it's going forward as water. Water for that seed that's been planted. But that person who puts it out there, they might share the gospel with them again. And to them, they think they're sowing a seed, but that seed is going forward as water now. Living water. It's watering the seed that's already there. Because you can't plant a seed in a seed on a seed. But as you put it out, it's water. It's going out as water. So then they hear it again somewhere else down the road. Now that's that person's putting it out as a seed, but it's going forward as water. And finally, somewhere along the way, somebody else is going to share the gospel. Somebody else is going to present Christ. Somebody else is going to let their light so shine and that person is going to be brought to the point where they have to decide, well, wow. That seed was sprung and sprouted now. 
increase from God. And that person who shares with them, that's the harvest. That's the reaper. That's the person that gets to pluck that seed and present it to God. Now, that's the harvester. We don't know. We don't know when we present the gospel. If that person is going to receive it right there. We would love for them to be able to preach, for them to be able to pray with them and to rejoice with them and, 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 and begin discipling them as soon as we present that. We would love for that to be able to happen. But it's not always going to happen. Sometimes we just get to plant the seeds, sometimes we just get to water. Somewhere down the line, we don't even know how many people in our lives we've impacted with the gospel. We don't know. We, we, we won't know until we get to heaven. We won't know. Verse 37 says, For in this the saying is true, one sows and another reaps. We're all out there doing the same thing. We're all out there fulfilling the Great Commission. Matthew 28, 19, and 20. We therefore make disciples of all nations. If we get to that point, if we get the opportunity, when we're sharing the gospel, when we're letting our, our light so shine, and that person comes up and says, you know what? What must I do to be saved? And God words our mouth that we represent the gospel to them. And they have to decide Right now, if, if they're going to take Jesus as Lord and Savior as they're alive, if they want to have that restored relationship with God, if they get to that point and they say, yes, oh, hallelujah, then we rejoice with the angels. Then we pray with them. Then we invite them out to church. But what comes with that? Because the, 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 the word clearly says, make disciples of all nations. Make it a disciple, make it a follower. It doesn't say, go create baby Christians and leave them to their own. Make disciples. We're to be disciples. We're to be disciple makers. Bring them into the fold. Teach them what it is we know about Jesus. Which is why it's so important for us to continue to read, to learn more about Jesus, to figure out who it is, you know, Jesus is to us. The Jesus in the Bible. As he's presented in the Word of God. To know who that Jesus is. Because we can only take people as far as we are. We can only take people as far as we are. We don't have to have a Bible degree in order to share the gospel with somebody. All we need to know is from the example of the blind man after Jesus healed him and he was brought into court because they wanted to, uh, to, to persecute, prosecute Jesus for that. And the blind man says, well, you know what? Of this man, uh, who he is and, and, and all of this, I don't know. But I know this. I was blind and now I see. That's all he had to offer. But that was so powerful. Because they knew the man. They knew that he was the man born blind. They knew all of that. And the man didn't offer up big, long, eloquent words. I know this. I was blind, but now I see. That's all he said. He was sowing right there. Seven words, but he was flinging the gospel everywhere. He was sowing seeds everywhere. Every single person in that room. <laughs> Got seed thrown down with those seven words. I said you to reap that which that for which you have not labored. God sends us forward to Reap that which we for which we have not labored. I'll give an excellent example of reaping what you did not labor for. <laughs> Somebody comes in and cleans your room. You know you should have been in there helping. You walk in and talk about, oh, this is such a clean room. You're reaping something that you did not labor for. 
That's for sure. But what God is talking about right here is if we share the gospel with somebody and they accept it on the spot, we're reaping. But the labor took place all those years before. When that per- from the first time that person heard the gospel to all those years where they would flip through the channels and see this 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 Christian program. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know what? Uh, or to hear a gospel song on the radio or a gospel song that, that, that somebody um, shared with them. When they were at school, hey, have you ever heard of Lecrae? Uh, you know, something like that. That's so in, that, 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 that was more water on that seed. That was that Christian letting his light so shine. That was that Christian um, so in so and see that went forth as water. All we're commanded to do is sow the seed. The Holy Spirit knows in what form it has to go out. He's the one that decides or knows it's it's seed in this person. Even sitting in this room, if this room were full of people, a bunch of people just walked in off the street, and I'm just preaching. The Holy Spirit is the one making that, making that word what it needs to be to this person or that person. This person may have never heard the gospel before, and I'm just preaching up here. I'm talking, carrying on, and we sharing, and the Holy Spirit planting seed. This person may be backslid. Which means they got saved at some point and turned away from God. Just up in the, and yet I'm up here preaching and talking and carrying on. And the Holy Spirit is water. Water. This person might be a, a baby Christian, somebody who just got saved. And I'm just up here preaching and talking. Yet again, the Holy Spirit, this person, what we say? No. <laughs> and this person is a seasoned Christian who's been walking with God for a long time, who needs a word of encouragement, who, who, who may have had a question about something that, that, they, that they had read or, 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 or is uh, trying to make a decision about something. I'm just up here preaching and talking and carrying on. And the Holy Spirit will take something out of that word that God is speaking through me and bring it to this person, meat. Meat. So the Holy Spirit is going to do whatever it is that needs to be done in the person. He's going to put it out as what we, as what that person needs. But, but and none of that happens. None of that happens if we're not sulking. If we're not letting our light so shine. None of that happens. None of that happens. As I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. Labored. Others have labored. And you have entered, entered into their labors. That's all we're called to do. That's really our simplest marching order. Go out, ye, go ye therefore, make disciples of all nations, be a sower of seed. Love the Lord thy God, with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Love your enemies. Love, we're commanded to love. We're commanded to love. We're commanded to go make disciples of all nations. We're commanded to let our light so shine before men that they will see our good works and glorify God and glorify our Father is what it says more significantly. Glorify our Father. Do you remember at your graduation from uh, Tartan, when Mr. Gaines, Gaines looked in the, out of the audience and told me, you know, thank you, Mr. Davis. That's how we ought to live our lives. The things that Mom and I trained and taught you to do, that you manifested in that classroom, he didn't say thank you, Jonathan. He came to me as a representation of me and, my, and, and you know everything your mom and I had done. He said, "Thank you, Mr. Davis. You let your light so shine from the things that we taught you 
that he saw your good works and gave glory to your Father. That's how we ought to live our lives before others so that people will know that we indeed are children of God. Because this world that we live in, there's not many people that haven't heard of who God is. <clears throat> and they have their idea of how Christians ought to be, this, that, the other. But if we live our lives in a manner holy and pleasing to God, let it, His light shine through us because He is our light. When we say our light, that's what we're saying. We say, let your light so shine. That light that is within us, that is that Holy Spirit, as we live our lives and allow that light to shine through us, people will see the good works that we do. And they will honor and glorify God. And they will honor and glorify God. So we have to let our light so shine. We have to sow those seeds. We don't know if we're planting, if we're watering, if we're going to reap. We don't know. We don't know. But we're commanded to do. To do. And then wait and see what the results are. Wait and see. We may not, it, it, it may be years, it may, you know, days, months, whatever. We don't know what's going to pop up. We don't know what the result that we're going to see here in the future, I would say. We don't know what the immediate result is that we're going to see right now. But we know that as that seed of the gospel moves forward, it's gonna, it's gonna be watered. It's gonna be watered, and then at, at a time, it'll be harvested. No, that it'll be harvested. Amen. Amen. Give God some praise in this place today. Because He's worthy. He is indeed worthy. He's, he's demonstrated.